All right, we have a couple of people joining us. And I think we can just get started um, with introductions. So we can go around with um, our past Cardinal Quarter panelists. I can start. Um, my name is Catherine. I'm a current Cardinal Quarter peer advisor. I was a role in longevity fellow. Um, and in my service, I did a fellowship with the Center for Disability and Elder Law. Um, that was out in Chicago, but obviously remote. Um, what I did there was draft a lot of legal documents. I was talking to clients, a lot of intake interviews and pre-screens. Um, I had a great time. It was an amazing experience. Uh, and that was kind of my cardinal quarter. So if everybody could introduce themselves or other panelists and tell what cardinal quarter you did and kind of a little bit about it. Let's start with Piers. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Pierce Davis. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I'm a current junior. I study human biology. Um, and this past summer, I did a cardinal quarter. I did the Donald Kennedy Public Service Fellowship. Um, and I know we'll get into it in a little bit more detail as we go into the panel. So to really just kind of summarize what I did is like in a nutshell in a sentence. Essentially, I was working on kind of creating supplemental education because COVID, a lot of kids weren't able to be back in school or summer school or learning programs over the summer. And so I helped to develop kind of a curriculum to continue summer learning going that was passed out to local school districts, teaching them about health and what was COVID and kind of science as a broader spectrum. Um, and so I worked with local school districts and it was an awesome summer. So I'm happy to talk about it with you guys more in detail as we get into this. All right, um, we can go with Elizabeth next. Hey guys, um, I'm Elizabeth. I'm also a junior and I'm studying history at Stanford. Um, and this past summer, I completed a public law um, and public interest law fellowship, um, which allowed me to work at the Midwest Innocence Project in my hometown of Kansas City, uh, which is an organization dedicated to exonerating um, wrongly convicted people throughout the Midwest. Um, and so while I was there, um, I got to look at inmate applications to the project and kind of act as the initial screen on the applications. Um, and then I also did a couple of legal research projects while I was there. So I would be happy to answer any questions about the fellowship or the organization. Awesome, and then our final panelist is Jessica. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Jessica. I use she, her pronouns. I'm also a junior um, and I'm studying sociology. Um, I, this past summer, I did the, I also did the um, public interest law fellowship like Elizabeth. Um, and I um, was, and I interned for the um, immigrant and employee rights section um, for the Department of Justice. And I did um, also like Elizabeth, I did some um, legal research and um, conducted interviews for um, people who were, um, who had submitted um, complaints about discrimination uh, and other people who might serve as witnesses. Awesome, so we're just gonna go through a couple questions with our panelists. Um, I have a couple of questions written out and then anybody who is joining us um, who is interested in Cardinal Quarter, please feel free. Um, we're at the end, we're gonna have a little Q&A, shout out some questions. So I'm gonna go through some that I think um, we'll cover a lot of what you might be wondering. Um, I think the first thing that we should talk about is how you prepared for your Cardinal Quarter. So whether it was self-design or pre-arranged, what did you do and what steps did you take um, before the application process, which is where like our future um, Cardinal Quarter participants are right now. Anybody can take this, just feel free to jump in. I can start us off. I think that, um, so I did the Donald Kennedy Public Service Fellowship, which was a self-designed one. Um, and to kind of clarify what that means, just in case that's not even clear at the beginning, I think there's two kinds of fellowships, either kind of a pre-arranged one where you kind of, it's already set up through um, kind of Cardinal Quarter and all these things, and you kind of just reach out and make a pairing. Or if it's self-designed, you reach out to the organization yourself. Um, and so I actually reached out with the company that I had interned with the summer before, because um, I already kind of saw an opportunity to work with them. 
And I basically pitched them my project and it was that I wanted to design essentially a workbook full of science experiments and science topics related around health and kind of things like that to then pass to school districts. And I said, okay, great. But I think in that preparation phase, I think uh, a big thing was really reaching out to them and understanding what they actually wanted from me so that I knew kind of what resources to gather before I got there. I think a big thing is knowing what's like their, their etiquette, how does their Zoom work? I think there's a lot of intangible things that I don't think we don't think about that are necessary to prepare. And so because mine was virtual, I was really concerned with like making sure I had all my Zoom links ready and knew when the meeting times were going to be. If I had a question asking like, what's the best way to reach my supervisor? Is it a text, is it an email? Um, and so I kind of just getting, getting my bearings was the biggest part of my preparation phase. Um, that was a very similar experience to me um, because I had never heard of the um, uh, Employee and Immigrant Rights Section um, at the DOJ. I was unfamiliar with the type of work they did. This was prior to finding out um, about the internship opportunity. Um, and so it, what I did was I looked, I went on their website and I looked at all of the recent cases that they have settled. Um, whether they found uh, discrimin uh, discrimination or not. Um, and I, I looked at the type of, of companies that they were suing um, and the type of attorneys that were working on, on these cases as well. Uh, and then I reached out to my um, supervisors and I, and I asked whether there was um, any specific um, any specific articles or books or <laughs> topics that I should be looking into just to prepare. Um, since, of course, I'm not um, uh, someone who's very familiar with that type of law. Uh, so that took a lot of, um, not a lot, just a variety of different types of readings um, to familiarize myself with the type of work that I would be doing. Um, yeah, and just very briefly, again, very similar experiences to Pierce and Jessica. Um, mine was also um, self-designed. And so I think the thing that scared me most about the process was kind of initially reaching out to the organization I wanted to work with. Um, I'd never really like cold emailed anyone before, um, but I've really found like throughout my time at Stanford, if you show people in the industry that you're interested in what they do, in my experience, everyone has been super helpful with, you know, getting back to you and, you um, appreciating that you're interested in what they've devoted their lives to doing. Um, so I would say, don't be afraid to reach out, um, do the cold email. I bet they get a lot of them and they're totally used to it. Um, and then also peers touched on this, but um, figuring out how they like to communicate, I found to be super important. Um, I'd never used like Slack before, um, but this company was very big on Slack. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of getting your bearings in that sense, I think is a simple thing you can do, but I found it to be like very helpful. Awesome. So now that we have like a good number of people here, I just wanted to go over and do a brief overview of what Cardinal Quarter actually is. So it's a nine week fellowship. Um, we're offering it in the spring and the summer. Um, there are various deadlines for that, which I'll go over, but essentially it's a 35 hour a week fellowship. So you're doing it full time um, for nine weeks. And then we have a difference between our prearranged, our self-design and our projects. So Pierce kind of touched on this, but the prearranged opportunities are already outlined for you. You just apply to them. They have the organization set and you kind of follow the internship that has been set there. Um, any self-designed internship can be really whatever you dream of. It has to be in public service, obviously, um, but it can be in a variety of fields. So obviously we're talking about health and human rights today, um, but it could be in environmental science, um, I know we do a couple others with education, um, so you can really check out all those awesome opportunities on our website. Um, I'm going to drop in the chat our timeline. Um, so if you take a look at that, um, the different deadlines. So our Haas Center um, spring deadline is going to be February 1st. So if you're thinking about doing a Cardinal Court in the spring, it's kind of a quick turnaround. Um, feel free to schedule an appointment with any of the peer advisors. We can hurry up and get you on that. Um, and then for the summer deadline, anything international, which fingers crossed um, COVID <laughs> pending is gonna be February 15th. And then any summer opportunities gonna be March 15th. 
Now the application process is just one application. Um, that's very different for us this year. So you're gonna fill out the one application and then any fellowship that matches, um, for example, if you're doing a self-design, any fellowship that matches this, the organization that you found and the work that you're gonna do, you're just gonna go and check off all those boxes. Um, and then us as a team, we're gonna allocate the resources that we have to you guys um, the best that we can. So I think that kind of answers any overview questions. Um, I wanted to just shoot it back to our panelists. Um, what is one piece of advice that you would give to students currently evaluating different spring and summer opportunities? That kind of goes off of our last question, but anything that you wish you would have known? I can start us off actually, um, since I also am part of the panel, I guess. But um, I think one thing that I wish I would have known is start super early. Um, I was kind of cramming to get everything in in last minute. And um, part of the application too, I should mention, there are two letters of rec. So one will be from an academic source um, that can be a teacher, uh, a former employer, um, an advisor. And then the second one will be from your community partner. So you have to make sure that you have those ahead of time. There's also a couple questions in the application process that you really want to start thinking about. So I highly recommend just starting the application today, even if you're considering it, even if you never send it in, you start it today, look at, over those questions, see exactly what you need to get done and set your schedule now so that it's w much easier for you once that March 15th deadline comes around. I think one thing that I found um, really valuable in the end that I wish I would have known sooner, I think that, um, so give a little background on me. I'm from Texas. That's where I am now back home with my family. And the part of Texas that I'm from, there's not like a whole lot going on necessarily as far as like career progression and like academic internships kind of in my area. And so one of the big goals I had for the summer that I did this Cardinal Quarter was I wanted to be back home with my family for the summer. And I wanted to find something to do there. Um, and I don't think I realized at the time how valuable of a resource Cardinal Quarter self-designed was because essentially with self-designed, you can map out all of your own personal priorities. What do you wanna be doing? Who do you wanna do it with? And where do you wanna do it was the big one for me. And so once I knew that was a, a possibility, I was a matter of reaching out to kind of the few select people in my hometown of El Paso and like, hey, let's make this happen. Um, and I wish I would have known that sooner I think it would have been a lot less stressful of a time to put it together so last minute. Um, but I think the, the advice I would give is like, get your priorities really straight from the beginning and you don't necessarily have to settle. I think that it's, it's very possible to check off all of your priorities if you kind of design it yourself and kind of pick what you want out of the experience. Yeah, like has been mentioned, um, I, I, I found my internship through Stanford Women in politi uh, Politics, so I, I applied um, there first, and then they helped me with my application for the um, Public Interest Law Fellowship. Uh, so I would recommend that if you are, so technically it's considered self-designed, but it was already pre-arranged. Um, so I would recommend if you are looking into internships that are um, partnered with uh, Stanford in government or Stanford Women in Politics or any other student organization, um, look into their timeline and see whether it matches up with the timeline of um, cardinal, for a cardinal quarter opportunity, just so you're not trying to figure out funding opportunities last minute. Um, and if you're also unsure of, of what kind of fellowship you would like to apply to your internship or like what internship you would like to use in the first place, um, I would again recommend that you look at different options, especially if you're not, if you're too scared or maybe you're not sure of who you want to work with, check out Stanford in government, Stanford Women in Politics, and, and there are other student orgs that also do these pre, have these pre-arranged um, community partners. Um, across the country. So yeah, I just recommend that you check out other student orgs, see what they're offering and get um, start early on your 
um, application for cardinal glitter. Um, yeah, and just a, a quick thing, once you do find maybe the fellowship opportunity that you're interested in, I found it really helpful um, that once I've kind of gotten some ideas for my fellowship or written a few things down is to go to some of the workshops that different organizations on campus have. Like I know Hume has been really helpful with fellowships for me, but also I know Stanford and government has fellowship writing workshops. I believe um, Stanford Women in Politics does as well. So I would really take advantage of those opportunities and just, you know, get like another set of eyes to look at your um, to look at your application. Yeah, I'm just going to drop in the chat really quick the list of opportunities that we have. So you'll see there's just a wide variety of fellowships for you to look through. Um, at this time, though, I wanted to open it up to anybody dropping in for any questions that you have. I have a list of other questions. If you don't have any, I'll throw them at the panelists. But if you're here and you got some questions, throw them out right now. Um, feel free to just unmute yourself and, and drop in. Or type it in the chat. That also works. Yes, also works. Also, if everyone's just here to listen, I could keep shooting them questions. OK, we have a question. How prepared should we be before we set up a meeting with a Cardinal Court Advisor? Not prepared at all. You can be on step zero. You can be on step 100. We are here for you throughout the whole process. Um, I know I've had a couple of advising meetings where they don't know what to do or where to start. And I kind of direct them in a position. We kind of talk through maybe location. Where do you want to be this summer pending, you know, it not being remote? Um, who do you want to work with? Um, what field are you interested in? Or it could be, you know, I'm about to submit my application. Um, I have a couple questions about what you're looking for or what's like a strong application look like. Um, so yeah, really anything. And you can find all our links, our Calendly links on the website. I'll actually put that in the chat. I'll find that in a second. Um, but you can just sign up for any advising appointments. There's uh, four other uh, peer advisors. So between the five of us, you should be able to find some time. Okay, another question. Um, do you have any tips for initially reaching out to community partners and what types of things we should bring up or ask? Any of our panelists can take this one. I think a big thing um, that I, I'm glad that I utilized, I think that when you approach a community partner, I think for someone like an outside community partner who doesn't already kind of understand fundamentally how Cardinal Quarter works, make sure you start off at least in the beginning by saying i have the potential for a fully funded internship since like the the whole point is that the the organization should not be funding you themselves it's the cardinal quarter is funding you and so at that point if you kind of center your pitch around that like when i did it it was like hey i have an idea i'm gonna do all the work and you don't have to pay for it even if they didn't care about the first two that last thing is like oh so at this point you're basically a free intern and if the company is like, I mean, that, 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 that's a pretty hard thing to say no to. And so I think being aware that that can be your leverage, if nothing else, I think is a really helpful tip. Um, yeah, just kind of building off that. I also would say um, in my email, the, the funding thing was a really good point. I'd also maybe give a deadline for when you like, for when the applications do just because like I, I said earlier that these people really want to help you and I truly believe that but they're also like busy working professionals so you know they have a lot on their plate so I'd say just like giving them like the application for me to get funding to work for you for free um is whatever I, I don't know the date but I would definitely also say that in the email yeah um I also I I didn't have something arranged. I already had something arranged for this past summer, but two summers ago, um, I was also doing um, the reaching out to community partners and I wouldn't recommend to put all your eggs into one basket. Um, I would recommend to have a few um, other organizations that you would like to be working, that you would like to work for with. Um, 
and just be aware of like that you might be rejected or that they might not have the capacity to bring in another person, even though it's fully funded. Yeah, I had a question and I think it's good to bring up. So um, Kirsty asked, um, do you guys have any advice for what to do if you have like a general topic of interest, for example, like health equity, but aren't sure how to proceed? Um, anyone can jump in after I give my spiel, but I think where I start is what type of work do you wanna do? So if you have a general interest or field, um, a nice direction to go into is what exactly do I want to be doing? Um, so that obviously could take very different forms. You could be working closely with a certain community. You could think about um, maybe it's like research that you want to do or you want to work specifically with, um, I don't know, kids, like a, a certain group. Um, so I think that's another good way to narrow it down. Another piece of advice I have is just to Google, see like who is out there, who's doing what in what area. Um, Google is your best friend because a lot of times you can find just different organizations through that. Um, if anybody else wants to add, though, feel free. Yeah, um, just real quick, um, a couple things. One, I, I really liked what Pierce said earlier about kind of thinking about your priorities. Like I knew last summer I wanted to work at a legal organization, but that's like super broad. And so I narrowed it down by saying, I wanna be in my hometown. Um, it ended up being remote, so like jokes on me, but I found that to be another way, useful way to narrow it down. Um, and then also I would really recommend looking at lists on um, the Cardinal Quarter website of past Cardinal Quarter participants. Um, I've had three girls just this quarter reach out to me and say, hey, I saw you worked at the Midwest Innocence Project. I'm interested in that. Could you like tell me a little bit about what you did? And we just like hopped on Zoom and like had really nice conversations um, about like everything and nothing about the experience. So I would really recommend that if you see anything on the list that kind of jumps out at you, like, hey, that'd be really cool. I would not hesitate at all to just email that person and like ask them questions or organize a Zoom meeting. Uh, one thing I want to add, and this is this is pretty brief, but I think um, set up an appointment with Catherine or one of their peer advisors. I think that like I'm interested in healthcare. Okay, you're starting here. If you're interested in a cardinal quarter and just healthcare, I mean, it's Catherine's job and the peer advisor's job to just know what fellowships are for what. And so she's immediately going to take your scope from here, maybe down at least a little bit. And so now all of a sudden you're still interested in healthcare, but you have like a narrow set of fellowships that you can target it at. And each one's going to have a different niche. And so you almost don't even need to come up with the niche yourself. You can kind of see what the niches are once she narrows it down for you and then pick which one you like the best. Yeah, thanks for that, Pierce. Um, really just come set up an advising appointment with any of us. That is our job, that's what we're here for. Um, so yeah, we can talk, brainstorm, whatever you guys need. Um, any other questions? All right, I think I'll shoot another one out at the panelists. So I just wanna hear about one or two highlights from your summer. I think it's always nice to hear some positive experiences from our awesome fellowships. Um, I can start. Um, one thing that was really cool for me this summer was um, every year the Midwest Instance Project has this uh, fundraising gala where they raise money um, for the organization. And this year it was um, virtual, which was not the norm, but um, it was still just an amazing experience. The, the keynote speaker for the organization was um, a member of the Central Park Five, who, um, for those of you that aren't familiar, was um, this group of five, um, this group of five black teenagers, I think black and Latino teenagers in New York who were wrongly convicted for rape and they spent over a decade in prison. Um, and then ultimately they were exonerated um, by the Innocence Network. Um, but just to see like this case and this guy that spent 10 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit really like brought home for me the just how important the mission of this organization was. And it kind of gave like a real life story um, and a face to kind of these issues that I'd been working on all summer. Um, and so that was just 
um, like an amazing experience for me. Um, there's a great documentary on Netflix about the Central Park Five, if any of you are interested, but just like hear him speak and hear his story was, was really cool. I can, I can go next. I think um, for, for me and to give kind of a little preface of like what my project was, because it's kind of necessary to understand this. Essentially, the idea is that um, a lot of research has shown that uh, low income communities specifically are affected by their summers away from the classroom. And so if you can imagine like higher income populations in when they're kids, their learning kind of goes up like this and it continues throughout the summer. But if you're from a low income demographic, it also goes up. But then as soon as you hit the summer, it plateaus. And the goal of my cardinal quarter was basically to take that plateau and put it back on track to kind of get rid of some of that disparity in education between high and low income students over the summer. But what that amounted to was I had to interview a bunch of kids because I needed to understand, like, if I make a resource for you to continue to learn and continue to be excited about, what do you actually want to learn about? I think one of the big issues is that a lot of kids in low income communities where my cardinal quarter took place are just throwing resources and it's like just learn it and it's like that's that's never going to get anywhere. And so one of the cool things that I got to do was interview a bunch of middle schoolers and a bunch of teachers and ask like hey, what are you excited about learning about and that's what I'm going to make for you so you can actually learn about that. And so I got to talk to some awesome middle school students who were really really excited. I think that because especially it was like the time of covid and we're still in covid but at that time, it was kind of the beginning of really the lockdown phase and kids were now stuck at home. And I think seeing kids so excited to like do a science experiment was a really cool and like meaningful experience for me because knowing in the back of my mind that them being excited about that science experiment and learning about the topics and the careers that they could pursue off of that was not only making them happy, but without them even knowing it was also working towards the bigger mission of like reducing that disparity in education between those two demographics. And so, it ended up being a really, really meaningful summer for me that I'm super grateful for. Um, that, that sounds really cool, um, really meaningful. Um, one of the things that, or like an experience that I had that was very rewarding um, was during one of my interviews. So a little bit more about what the immigrant and the employee right section does is that it um, protects um, US workers on various, um, with various immigration statuses and citizenship statuses uh, against discrimination um, based on um, your citizenship status. Uh, and at the time, I'm, I'm, at the time there was a, an investigation on um, a company that was potentially discriminating against their uh, Spanish speaking workers. And so uh, I was calling some of the workers who might be able to, to, to testify or share information about what was going on. And I called, um, a, a, called a, a woman who seemed to be really excited about my call. I mean, after my, after my um, introduction, uh, just I'm, because I'm cold calling. So after my introduction, either the call goes really bad and they get really defensive or they are really open to, to hearing out what, um, what, what the purpose of the call is and the information that we're seeking to gather. And so this, this woman was, was so happy to hear that someone from the government was calling about this particular issue uh, because it was something that she had also noticed. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, it was um, a really rewarding experience. And I, 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 was, I was really thankful for, for, for the purpose of, of the section, um, the immigrant and employee rights section. Uh, and, and I was really happy to have similar experiences with those phone calls and was displeased when I had really negative experiences, but the positive experiences outnumbered uh, entirely the negative ones. Yeah, that's awesome, Jessica. I also could tell a little bit about my experience. So I agree that I think the community I worked with 
was definitely the highlight of my cardinal quarter, um, which is why I really emphasize that. I think that's something you should really consider when thinking about what opportunities you want to look into. What kind of people do you want to work with? Um, what kind of people do you want to impact? So I worked with the elder and disabled community and the disabled community in particular um, and the elder community or work communities I've worked with in the past. Um, I volunteer at a veterans hospital and then I also teach a dance class for kids with special needs. So that kind of combined my two, like where my heart is with those communities into one summer experience. Um, and I had an inter intake interview. It was actually my first intake interview of the summer. And these interviews usually take like 30 minutes. Um, this one particular client was for a will. And you go through all this information. It's a lot of demographic. It's very tedious. Um, and, you know, it takes a lot of attention, a lot of time. And I think our intake interview ended up being somewhere closer to an hour um, because this particular client just needed more time. A lot of repetition um, was particularly hard of hearing. And at the end, um, this client actually thanked me and said that, like, I was one of the most pleasant people that she had talked to and how patient I was and really just thanked me for taking the time to speak with her and particularly noted that I didn't feel like rushed, like I was rushing her um, and that I valued her and her experience and, and making sure that she felt comfortable with the documents and the, and the legal language and all that. Um, so that was really touching to me because I was so glad that I could impact her in a positive way and make have her have a positive experience because a lot of times when people call in with um, legal questions or have to get legal advice, um, it's very confusing and it can be hard. Um, so that was very, very positive for me and I just loved being able to impact that community positively. Um, so yeah, does anybody have, I'm going to ask again, if anyone here visiting has any questions, feel free to shoot them out now. If not, I'll ask another one. Also panelists, if you want to just, if you have a question or something that you want to cover that you think is important, feel free to just jump in too. Oh, wait, I think I missed the questions in the chat. So... <laughs> Let's see here. Um, first question, would it be bad to email multiple community partners at once? Um, I know we shouldn't put all our eggs in one basket, but how should we approach that? Um, I definitely recommend emailing multiple at once. I wouldn't recommend leading on multiple at once. Um, so there's a very clear distinction between that. Seeing if they're interested, if they're available, um, if they have the capacity to take you on as an intern, um, if they have the time, if they have a supervisor who's willing to look over uh, what you're doing in the summer, that's very, very important to find out. I wouldn't necessarily recommend promising like or saying yes to anybody, um, setting it in stone. So what I did is I emailed, I think like 20 or 30 different like legal centers and law firms. Um, and then I narrowed it down and only had an interview with the one I was interested in. That was the one that I felt most connected to. Um, and after that interview, they actually offered me the position. So um, that was a quick turnaround. It was kind of like all within a day. They're like, all right, we're taking you. So um, that was super simple. But if your application process is a little bit longer, maybe interview at two places. Um, but I hope that helps. If anybody else wants to jump in on that question, feel free. Yeah, I would I would definitely recommend emailing multiple organizations just because like I said earlier, I mean, you know, some won't get back to you and some, I don't know, they, ju they just don't know yet what their summer is going to look like. Um, but I, I liked what Catherine said. I mean, don't like promise, like if you say yes to me, I will work for you this summer. Um, cause again, that just like looks bad if you don't end up working there. Um, so yeah, keep your options open, but don't make any promises you can't keep, I would say. Also just a thing to note, if you do, are speaking to multiple organizations, make sure to send them like a thank you, but I have found a different opportunity or, you know, a nicely worded email, just letting them know that you've gone a different direction because you don't want to leave any like open doors behind just in case in the future you do connect with them again um, or you could be looking to them for a different cardinal quarter if you do this multiple times which 
didn't mention, you can do multiple cardinal quarters. You can't do the same fellowship, um, but you can do cardinal quarter, I mean, every summer of Stanford, if, if that's where your heart is. Um, and then our next question, is there an interview involved with either the pre-designed or self-arranged experience? I assume there is if you're reaching out to orgs yourself. And if so, do you expect any advice or do you have any advice for prepping what to expect? So just an overview of this, and then I think we can have our panelists kind of give advice about how their interviews went and what how to prepare for interviews. But I had an interview with my actual organization. It was super quick, like five minutes over the phone. Um, and they like offered me the position right then and there. I know it's not like that for everybody, but that was my experience. It was really awesome. Um, and then there is a separate Cardinal Quarter interview. So after we get all your applications, um, you'll get an email if you are up for an interview. Um, if we've offered you an interview, you'll come in and it'll be Hillary, who is here uh, listening in. And um, I'm not sure if Valerie will be back yet. Valerie is our other advice, um, other Cardinal Quarter kind of head person, but she um, is out on maternity leave right now. Um, and then it'll be one or two other peer advisors in there with for the interviews with you. Um, and for the advice and prepping, I'm going to turn that over to our panelists. I think that there's two big words you should keep in mind. I think what and why. I think for me at the beginning, my project wasn't super set in stone because I wasn't sure what COVID was going to do. Um, and I remember at the beginning, one of the peer advisors was like, I'm going to be honest with you, Pierce. I don't understand what you're applying for. Like, I don't get your project. And I was like, that's a very good point. So I think have what you're going to do very, very clear. And you should be able to explain like, this is what I'm doing. My plan is to accomplish this over this time. These are kind of my steps. This is my end goal. So make it really clear so the interviewer understands what exactly it is that you want to accomplish. And the second thing is the why part. I would say like, why do you want to do that? So I would say like, okay, these are my goals. And this is why I think those goals are important and why it's personally meaningful to me and why I think it'll benefit the community that I'm working with. I think if you're trying to convince a community partner to work with them, I think it's all about why is this beneficial to your community and what can I add to this community? And if you're interviewing with the, the Cardinal Quarter, I think it's still about that. But I also think it's shifted a little bit into like, why do you want to do Cardinal Quarter? Like, why is Cardinal Quarter the means? Like, Cardinal Quarter will allow me to do X, Y, and Z. And that's important to me because X, Y, and Z. So I think the what and the why are the two big words that I would focus on. Um, yeah, that, those are um, great points. Um, one thing, um, so for the the, the pre-arranged internships, I did one two summers ago after my freshman year. And so this past year, I was one of the people interviewing for that fellowship. And I really appreciated when people like actually knew about the organization that I worked at, just because I think it shows like they're actually interested. They're not just looking for a fellowship, but they're they're really interested in this fellowship in particular. Um, that's a small thing, but it just really stood out to me when they like actually knew kind of what was going on at the organization at the time and like they could kind of spell out for me why this particular organization was like had impacted them and um, made them want to work there for a summer. Yeah, yeah. Um, to add on to Elizabeth, both of my interviews asked me about what the um, the immigrant and employee rights section actually did and like what law it was um, protecting. Uh, so I would highly recommend that you look into what exactly the com your um, community partner or organization you're interested in um, does and how you would be an asset to them. And, you know, I would just um, agree with everything that has already been previously said. Awesome. Again, I invite you guys to throw anything in the chat, any questions, um, or feel free to unmute yourself. Um, I'll give like two seconds, see if any questions pop up, and then I have another one just in case. All right, so another question for our panelists. 
Um, how has completing your cardinal quarter changed the way that you think about yourself, your future, the world, et cetera, really anything? Um, and then I think another thing that we can touch on is how has it impacted maybe the way that you think about your Stanford experience too? And how has that changed? Um, I can go. Um, I think the main thing that Cardinal Quarter did for me was it kind of like, I don't know, broadened the issues that I was working with just because like Stanford is an absolutely amazing place with amazing people, amazing professors. But, you know, it can like we say this all the time, but it really is like a bubble in some senses, like you're in beautiful California, you're like basically in paradise. And then there are all these issues going around around the world. And I know at least for me, like, so it's really easy to forget about that when I'm actually on campus. And so like getting to work at the Midwest Innocence Project over the summer, I don't know, kind of just like gave like personal stories to these issues that I'd been learning about in classrooms, if that makes sense. Um, so I think that was really influential for me. And then like, on a more kind of practical level, um, it showed me that I really like doing legal work. I know that's like kind of a boring answer, but um, you know, like law school is a big decision. And I, I think it really did show me that like, I want to go to law school and I want to pursue a career in this field. So for me, I think there was both like personal and kind of like practical advantages to the Cardinal Quarter. Yeah, I, I had a similar experience um, as Elizabeth. Uh, however, I think one of the things that it reminded me was um, one of the um, seven principles of ethics and um, ethical service, was, uh, which was humility. Um, because I, it, like when you go into these spaces or when you're talking to people who might come from completely different backgrounds as you, um, like you, you, you have to remember the privilege that you have and that you're not there to like fix everything, but rather you're there to support the organization and the people you're serving. Um, and you have to, you know, give yourself that reminder. And I think that that really has really helped me like situate myself in the type of work that I want to do in the future, in law, in immigrant communities. And um, I, I'm really thankful for that experience because I think otherwise I would have gone in blinded, maybe thinking that, you know, I knew the solution to everything or that, um, that I was better than them in some, some way or another, which is not, not true. Um, and yeah, yeah, just, I, it was, a, it was a reminder of like, of humility. Yeah, so I think, um, so I'm a pre-med student and I'll kind of preface it beginning with that. And I think that before my cardinal quarter, I was really interested in kind of looking at this path of medicine and I still am there now, but I think I wanted to really look at health specifically from a different angle than I had kind of my previous summer. And so this was a really cool opportunity to kind of look at the education of the health sciences. Because I think that for me, at least, when I thought about kind of being a doctor, I think that stereotypically there's this image of like a doctor or in an operating room or talking to patients. But I think there's so much that goes into the broad field of healthcare. Um, and I think that looking at it from a different perspective was really, really interesting. Looking at kind of like social determinants of health and how that's impacting the community that I'm trying to teach. How do I have to change teaching styles so that they're, I'm culturally competent and that everything is appropriate for the people that I'm teaching it to? Um, and I think that it was a really valuable lesson for me because it gives me a much better holistic perspective on kind of health that I feel more prepared now kind of really applying to medical school and saying, hey, yes, I want to be a doctor and I've done these like pre-med things, but I'm also interested in the broad field of healthcare. And I think Cardinal Quarter, uh, for anybody kind of listening now who might be pre-med or considering health, I think that Cardinal Quarter is a really unique opportunity in the sense that it allows you to look at healthcare from a bunch of different perspectives, depending on, on what you're interested in. And I think that that was a really, really valuable takeaway. Um, and I think kind of for me personally, and I think a practical thing too to add in very quickly is I think that 
it was the first time for me where I felt like knowledge that I learned in the classroom translated to the real life. And I think that I was like, oh, I'm just like a student. Like I'm at the time I was like 19. I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. But I think we've learned a lot at Stanford, like in a very short amount of time. And I think that like having the confidence just like, hey, like I actually kind of learned some things like that. Like maybe that can apply here. And pulling from like some of the tools that you've learned in a classroom, I think it's a really cool way to like connect those two entities of like the classroom and the real world. Yeah, thanks for that, Pierce. Um, I think a reoccurring theme that you'll hear from all Cardinal Quarter participants is that it really helps you explore any field that you're considering thinking about in the future. I know we're really law heavy today, um, but my particular fellowship could be applied to health. Um, it really, Donald Kent, or the um, Role in Longevity Fellowship, um, it really is so broad, you just work with the elder community. So obviously I took that in a legal direction, you can take it in a health direction, you could take it in an educational direction. Um, you could really take that in any sort of field that you want to, um, which I think is so great about Cardinal Quarter and the flexibility of it. And the reason that we have this one application you check off the boxes is because we understand that not every opportunity that you find is going to fit into our fellowships and we're really trying to make that broad and and give you the resources to complete the public service fellowship that you your heart is in and that you desire to do um, so again if anybody has questions feel free to drop them in the chat um, shout them out stop me um, if not I'm going to go ahead and ask another question for our panelists um, what is one thing that you learned in your cardinal quarter that, because I know we talked a lot about how we learn stuff in our classroom and we can apply that to our cardinal quarter experience. What is one thing that you learned in your cardinal quarter that you don't think you could have learned in a classroom? I can start really quickly. I think, and because mine will be brief, because I've touched on this, I think, a little bit in what I've said so far, but I think one of the biggest things is that I think it's one thing to take like a sociology class or like a human biology core class and learn about social determinants of health and learning about, okay, there's a health disparity, there's a health gradient. Like, what does that, like, what does that mean? Like, we know that it's stratified by demographics. Okay, that's great. But then when you actually look at that firsthand and see, oh, wait a minute, like this difference in socioeconomic status or even just like residential segregation kind of, if you will, and looking at just different demographics, how they are actually impacting what you're trying to teach a child, I think for me was something that was really, really crucial to learn. I think that having to adapt my teaching style and the way that I talked about concepts as I maneuvered through this kind of socioeconomic status gradient was something that they can really only tell you you'll have to do in a classroom. And I think that once you actually get involved with the community you choose to work with, I think that that's a whole different perspective on kind of the subject that I personally don't think you can ever get in a classroom. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, one thing that I learned um, that I got to practice a lot was um, my communication and speaking skills, um, especially with those negative um, calls that I that I had. Um, it was it was challenging to you know express the purpose of the call and you know the importance of the call as well and when people got defensive or when people weren't willing to have that conversation like i think one you, you have to be respectful of their decision but um it, it gives you the opportunity to um learn how to, to communicate um and learn how to um, talk with people who may be in disagreement with you or, um, you know, who may be shouting at you or, or other negative things. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think that's something that I would have necessarily learned in the classroom, but, uh, you know, other than actually going into the real world and experiencing, um, experiencing, you know, what it's like to work at um, the at the Department of Justice. Um, yeah, what I was gonna say is it's pretty similar to Jessica. Just I I found 
And what I learned, I think, was like the importance of just kind of building relationships with the people you're working with. Um, I cannot recommend enough, like, if it's in person, reaching out to your supervisor and asking them to grab coffee, or even if it's online, I just like hopped on Zoom with my supervisor. Um, Cause at the end of the day, like, first of all, I mean, my supervisor have all just been very nice people, but also they've devoted themselves to like working in a field that I'm personally very interested in. And so they just have like such a, you know, like vast expanse of knowledge on it and kind of the nitty gritty everyday workings of the field. Um, and so I found that like some of the things I remember most from my experiences have just been like these conversations with them, like how they got there, um, why these issues are important to them. Um, yeah, so I just say like kind of attempting to build a relationship with whoever you're working with is really important. Yeah, and then one thing I wanted to touch on was um, the thing that I think I learned the most is just about the legal field in general. Um, and I think that this can apply to really any health or human right um, avenue that you take, because um, at like Stanford right now as an undergrad, I don't have that many opportunities to necessarily be interacting with legal work. Um, so in my fellowship, when I was drafting wills and, and I was like actually writing these documents, I was writing toadies and power of attorney documents and small estate affidavits and my words were the ones that were being sent out um, to be recorded. I think that was really awesome because I learned so much about the legal field that I don't think I could have without this experience. Um, and I really think that's the best part about Cardinal Quarter is you can explore avenues, you can explore different career paths or work experiences that you wouldn't necessarily get um, in a classroom environment. Um, so as we wrap up here, we've got about um, seven-ish, eight minutes left. Um, I just wanted to open it up again to anybody visiting us. Please drop any questions. I've kind of exhausted my list. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I was about to say, I exhausted my list. So um, if you guys don't have any questions, we're going to wrap up. But Let's start here with Christy. Um, what factors did you guys think about when deciding to apply for a Cardinal Quarter opportunity as opposed to doing something different during the summer or spring? My answer is pretty straightforward, so I can go first. I think um, as a pre-med student, there's kind of a stigma that every summer you should go work in a lab and just do research, get a paper out of it, that, that's kind of the stigma with being pre-med and on like a pre-health track. I think for me personally, that's something that I do kind of throughout the course of the school year. Um, and I've been fortunate to get involved in that way, but I think that I, I was really interested in understanding health on a much broader scale. And so I think if anybody out there listening happens to be pre-med, I think this is a bold statement, but I feel very strongly about this. I think that if you are pre-med and you're interested in health, and you don't want to do research, I don't think there is a better opportunity outside of Cardinal Quarter to still help you combine those interests together. So I think for me, I was interested in continuing to do something that was related to health, and I wanted to be back home in El Paso. And to make those two happen, it was like Cardinal Quarter was like the perfect opportunity because self-design, I got to choose where I wanted to be, and I got to design what I wanted to do. And so I could tie everything in health related and pre-med that I wanted to, because I really didn't want to spend a summer in a, in a lab doing research necessarily that, that, that specific summer. Um, and so that, that was really my driving factor. Yeah, I would, I would just kind of echo what, what Pierce said. Um, my two um, summers through Cardinal Quarter have both been um, having to do with the legal field. Um, and they've both been amazing experiences just because I know for law school, but I'm assuming it's also true for med school, like you are not the top tier of who like would be their first choice to recruit because they have law students and medical students. So you're like, it's, it's kind of, it can be hard to get an internship in the fields, at least from my experience. Um, but Cardinal Quarter has like gives you the opportunity basically to do that because it funds you. And then it also has just a number of prearranged opportunities that are already in these fields. Um, and so I can't recommend enough, even if you're just considering um, graduate school, I, I would echo what Pierce said, I really don't think there's a better opportunity than Cardinal Quarter to kind of at least get your feet wet in the fields, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, I just want to build off of what Elizabeth just said. Another really important part about Colonel Quarter is the connections that we already have. Um, so really that list that she mentioned of past peer advisors if you or peer Colonel Quarter participants, if you go on the advising list, um, we have, I think, up until like 2016 listed out for you. You can look at every single fellowship and who did what and what organization. Um, and I know a lot of Stanford students are very willing to talk about their opportunities. So you can either contact them, contact a peer advisor, and we can put you in touch or we can talk about it. Um, and then also we have like a list of past fellows. It's like an interactive map from this past year and it's really cool. Um, but any of those organizations that they worked with have already experienced what it's like to work with a Cardinal Quarter Fellow. So that's really, really beneficial in the fact that they understand the application process, they understand what needs to be done, um, and they kind of can give you that support and they're more likely to, you know, be in contact. So I think the connections we already have through Cardinal Quarter are very important. Yeah, one of the things I considered was um, like Pierce where I wanted to work and then the population that I wanted to work with. Um, and when I was looking for internships, for paid internships, the, I, they were not in the area that I wanted to be working in um, or you needed to be like an actual law student in order to um, intern. So you've already needed to be like in a professional degree um and cardinal the cardinal quarter just gives you is like built to give you that freedom and the opportunity to um to suit what you're interested in and, and it it helps you like build in what you're wanting to learn about who you're wanting to work with and where you're wanting to work with Thank you guys so much for all that. Um, we're coming up on the last two-ish minutes um, of this time. I really just want to open up to anybody here. If you have any final questions, feel free to shoot them in the chat, unmute yourself. Um, I'm just gonna give like a minute of silence. If not, I think we'll just wrap it up. Um, so any final questions? Also panelists, if you have any final thoughts to throw out there. All right, I'm gonna say that's probably the end. Um, so thank you guys so, oh, wait, there's one more, we're good. Um, I think I saw this somewhere on the website, but should we expect arranged internships to be virtual? Oh, do not apologize for all the questions. I am like the first person to ask a hundred questions, it's okay. Um, so for the pre-arranged um, internships, I think we are preparing for everything to be remote. Fingers crossed that, you know, COVID improves and, and we can get back to being in person. But I think even with your self-designed, you should prepare for everything to be remote. Um, and that means like, if you're thinking about something international, for example, this might not be the best year. Um, I think if your heart is really set on it, go for it. But another thing to keep in mind is if you do end up doing something international, for example, and then you're working at 1 a.m. because the time difference and it ends up being remote. I think that's something to consider. So um, yeah, I would say prepare for it being remote. Fingers crossed that it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's true. All right. Well, thank you guys so much um, for coming out today. We really appreciate your time, panelists. Um, thank you for, to everyone who came in and listened to us talk. Um, again, I just want to pub that you can sign up for peer advising hours with me or any of the other Cardinal Quarter peer advisors at any time. I drop the link in the website or in the chat, but you can also check it out on the Haas Center website under resources and student advising. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, yeah, thank you all for coming. I'm going to stop it.